Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm going to present our paper on rainfall data analysis of Iran using complex network view. By finding the clusters on the rainfall data, you will be able to understand storm, drought, and other extreme weather conditions that contribute to flooding. Or it can help us to find out where is necessary to build diversion structures or find a better place to build power stations. And of course, having a vision about the different rainfall zones can help us to analyze the climate impacts. But the question is that, how we can find these clusters? One way is to apply a clustering algorithm on the location. We have the magnitude and the longitude of every point in the map. And most of the clustering algorithm will be able to deal with it. But when we want to cluster the locations based on the rainfall data, it's not a smart choice to do the clustering only based on the locations of the stations. Sometimes we see two points in the map are close to each other, but the rainfall patterns are totally different. So it's always better to cluster the temporal rainfall data to get the most accurate results. One of the main issues with the temporal data is its missing values. In the past, people tend to write the records in the record papers, and it was easy to lose. Or sometimes they faced sensor malfunctions. Or sometimes the stations was built later than other stations. That's why in this kind of temporal data, it's a good chance that we face missing values. We wanted to apply rainfall zoning on Iran's rainfall data. It was 18 years daily observed data from 375 stations. There was 27% of the data missing, as you can see in the picture. The white areas are the missing data. There's an easy way to deal with missing data. We can put the average of other records instead of those values. So I did that and apply a k-means on the data. And as you can see in the picture, the clusters do not make any sense. There is a big cluster that covers from northwest to southeast of Iran and other clusters that not have an acceptable quality. The approach we chose was to construct a network from data. Then by applying a community detection algorithm on the constructed network, we could find the appropriate clusters. Even synchronization is the name of the method that we use to construct our network. This method can calculate the similarity between two events. Let's each, x and y be two places that we have their temporal data. And we want to calculate the similarity between the events that happens in those places. First, we define a time lag. That means if two events, of course, one from uh, X and Y from Y, take place in the time lag, we can conclude that the events are synced and we add a point to the similarity. After comparing all the events in X, to the events in Y, by a normalization, we will find out how much X and Y are similar to one another. If the amount W were close to one, that means X and Y are totally synchronized. Of course, we have to calculate the W for all pair stations in the temporal data. Now that the matrix W was constructed, we can easily make the agency matrix. We just need to define a threshold to decide which nodes should have an edge between them. By the way, we used 0.6 for the threshold. We want to find the communities in the network. Community structure is one of the properties of complex networks. So we should make sure our network that we built is a complex network. First property, that we check is a small word effect. 
That means if you want to move from a node to every node in the network, you will be able to get to that node in a short pass. Average shortest pass in our network was 2.71. So it has the small world effect. The degree distribution of complex network is extremely right skewed and it's far from a binomial distribution. The left side, as you can see, is a right skewed distribution and the right side is a binomial distribution. As you can see, the degree distribution of our network is right skewed and have a heavy tail. Now it's time to find the communities in our network. In detecting communities, not having an explicit answer is one of the biggest obstacles in this criterion. So a specific answer to a community detection problem can't be found. So we decide to pick two algorithms from two totally different approaches. One to find communities in a fuzzy way. That means a node can be belong to more than more, more than one community by applying a non-negative matrix factorization or NMF on the AJCC matrix we can discover fuzzy communities in the network non-negative matrix factorization is a machine learning algorithm that can factor a matrix as a multiplication of two other matrices by applying the NMF on the AJCC matrix in the results the matrix H can show us that how much a node belongs to other communities. Second approach is to find the communities in a crisp way. That means a node only can have one community. Label propagation is the algorithm that we used to find the non-fuzzy communities in the network. What label propagation does is a straightforward method. At first step, it gives all the nodes a unique label. That means there's no pair of nodes in the network that have the same label. In the next step, every node starts to propagate its label. And a node catches the label of its neighbor if the most of its neighbor have that label. After a few repeats of this step, we'll see the nodes that have a dense communication with each other have the same label. It's what we expect from a community detection algorithm to find the dense communications as we've called them communities or modules or clusters. The result of these two algorithms was similar to each other. So we decided to analyze the result of label propagation because it has a non-fuzzy community that is easier to interpret. And our results were promising. The community zero or the yellow part covers the hot and dry part of the southeast with low elevation. The community one or the dark green part is the smallest community that roughly covers the northeast with mid elevation. The community 2 is the biggest community with high elevation that covers Albors and Zagros mountains. The community 3 has a low elevation and covers the rainy part of the north. The community 4 covers the coldest part of Iran in northwest with high elevation. And the last community or the green part covers southwest of Iran with mid elevation. We use daily mean and the standard deviation of rainfall data to interpret the similarity of every node to its community. As I mentioned earlier, when two stations are close to one another, it doesn't mean that they should have the same rainfall pattern. In our result, I found three cities approximate to each other, but in three different communities. And as we can see, definitely they shouldn't be in the same community. Of course, 
they are more similar to their communities. It is great to find the clusters only based on the rainfall data, but I think if we could add the feature of distance to the network as a weight, it might help the accuracy of the results. And there you have it. Thank you for letting me stay.